This is Estados Unidos Mexicanos, a.k.a. the United Mexican States, or Mexico. A diverse land of dry deserts, tropical beaches, and dense forests and jungles. The 18th largest economy in the world. A country that mixes new with old. A land seeped in tradition and history, as well as some really great food. But Mexico is also a land of great contrasts. From the wealthier north to the poorer south, the wealthier middle incomes of Mexico can have a quality of life similar to the southern US or parts of Canada. And this difference of wealth can be seen anywhere in Mexico, from all of their cities, from Tijuana to Monterrey, Mexico City to Merida. All are drastically different and represent just a slice of what Mexico has to offer. But throwing virtually everything we just said out the window, we're gonna talk about Mexico's crime. Specifically, homicides. We're not here to talk about the good this time, we're gonna talk about the dark underbelly. The drugs, the cartels, the corruption, the human trafficking, and more. All the data being collected is straight from the Mexican government. And for statistical purposes, the information seen for each city in this video will have data from November 2019 to October 2020. The cities are ranked by homicide rate and have to have over 100,000 population. So tourist cities like Mazatlan might not make it on this list because there isn't as high a homicide rate but you can bet they have a very high theft rate. So grab yourself some street tacos and let's get into this. The top 10 most dangerous cities in Mexico. We start off in the Mexican state of Guanajuato and the city of Celaya. It is a fast growing city in a rather urban area, jumping from about 300,000 in 2005 to over 500,000 by 2019. This has put a lot of stress on the city and its infrastructure. In previous decades, the city has been praised for bringing many high-tech jobs to the city. It is along one of Mexico's major freeway systems and is easy transport in and out. Whether to Mexico City, Guadalajara, or Leon, the whole state, as a matter of fact, has been doing really well. But unfortunately, it's this wealth and the ease of transportation that has brought in gangs and drug cartels, which led to gang violence, shootings, extortion, kidnapping, any form of corruption you can imagine. It's a daily occurrence to read in the newspaper of the nightly shooting. Cartels in the city began stealing fuel from the local pipeline. The Mexican military and police decided to step in and stop that. That's when the gangs retaliated. A car bomb went off at the armory. And then they began extorting businesses in the city of Calea itself. When police tried to respond to the violence, the cartels responded again, shooting at the police chief's pickup truck. He survived and quickly resigned. But it doesn't even stop there, as the cartels are willing to attack the police station and free their buddies inside the jail. 48 people were killed in one weekend. The gangs then decide to kill Salea's mayor's husband. Soon after, the cartels lit at least 20 cars on fire throughout the city. And then they decided to block down highway access through much of the city by burning cars as blockades and shooting anyone who tried to go around them. So it seems that the police simply try to do their job. This is what's going to happen to the city. That's not good. And all this contributes to the at least 466 people killed in the past year in Celaya, ranking this the 10th most deadly place in Mexico. And it's a shame because this city has worked really hard to pull itself up. One can only hope they do so again and get the gangs, the crime, and the corruption dealt with. You're going to quickly notice a theme here because once again a city in the state of Guanajuato is on our list of most dangerous places. Just an hour south of Celaya, we have the city of Salvatierra. It is a much smaller city than Celaya, but sort of a hub city for the rural region around it. And unfortunately, much like Celaya, the cartels have moved in and taken over. Rival gangs fight for territory on a daily basis. And when anyone tries to stop the crime, they're usually stopped themselves. In 2019, three municipal employees were 
taken out by the local cartels. All the violence has definitely hurt all the tourist ambitions of this region as well, the state itself having many water parks and outdoor activities for people to do, and the city of Salvatierra has a vibrant commercial district, as well as many beautiful historic churches. Sadly, the town may be being used as a graveyard to hide all the bodies that the cartels kill. In 2020, over 60 bodies of missing people were found in the town in a forested area. All these people were people that had gone missing in the previous months. This small city of over 100,000 people had over 100 homicides this past year alone. It's definitely going to be an uphill battle to get rid of these cartels in the beautiful little town of Salvatierra. Tecate is known for much more than its beer. It's also known for being a less busy access point from San Diego into Mexico, as well as having a charming little downtown. And honestly, if you're a tourist, you might not really notice anything that bad with Tecate. It's unfortunate because almost all the crime is related to its border crossing with the USA. There's nothing on the other side. This makes it a popular place for people to smuggle things into the US, whether it be drugs, people, or anything else they can sneak in. But compared to any other city on this list, Tecate is definitely the safest city. The homicides are only tied to people on the wrong side of the tracks. As in, if you're working with the cartels, you have the highest chance of dying. Otherwise, everyone else seems to be pretty okay in this laid-back city on the border. This city is skewed high on the rankings because of the homicides due to the cartels. But they don't seem to be focusing their attention on the town itself as they do in other parts of Mexico. Tecate might be one of the safest places in Baja California. Still 107 homicides is nothing to blink your eyes at. In other news, the Tecate mayor blockaded herself in her office and had her municipal police department protect her as the Baja California State Police tried to arrest her to pay her bills. She had debt totaling $265,000. Don't worry, they arrested her. So maybe there is some corruption going on in Tecate. Juarez is world-renowned for being one of the most dangerous cities in the world. It is located in the state of Chihuahua, right across the border from El Paso, Texas. The city had long been known for its extensive corruption that went from the bottom to the top, including its police force. Heck, in 1990, there were 3,500 reported homicides in the city in one year. That's as bad as a city in a war-torn country. As the 90s turned into the 2000s, cartels were in control of the city and continued to have violent turf wars all throughout. But in 2011, things began to change. New police chief Julian Lazalia took the reins of the Juarez Police Department and said he was going to eliminate corruption. Cartels thought it was business as usual. The Sinaloan cartel offered him 80000 a week to turn a blind eye to their actions. He denied it, then immediately got a death threat and a note saying that they would kill a police officer officer every day until he accepted their offer. Instead, he divided up officers and sectors throughout the city and continued increased patrolling. He also had 800 officers fired due to corruption and ties to the cartel and a massive purge. Gang wars got worse as they targeted police officers. It became a weekly occurrence to have police officers shot and killed by different gangs. But the cartels were continually pushed into a corner and homicides dropped from the thousands to as low as about 410 in one year. Julian Lazalia is known for getting the crime under control in Juarez, but in 2015, he was attacked by the cartel and shot. Much to the anger of the cartels, he survived, and in 2019 announced he would run for mayor in the city of Tijuana, where he hopes to reduce the crime there as he did in Juarez. So what has happened in Juarez since he's left? Crime has gone up. Corruption has gone up, but it is still far less than it used to be. There were 1,479 homicides this past year, which is at about a rate of 104 per 100,000 people. As we saw with a controversially strong police chief, the police department was willing to fight like a war against the cartels. There were many deaths on both sides, and crime did go down. But was it worth it? Because now crimes are going up again. New police chiefs have different ideas and are possibly willing to be bought out. I guess time will tell with the city of Juarez. Llamas in the state of Sonora is a port city and once a popular beach resort town, but cartels have taken over the entire state, and Llamas is ground zero. 2019, things really kicked it off, as cartels began mass killings of municipal police officers. 
forcing the state to send in the state police. But it didn't stop there as city officials became the next targets. Several city officials were gunned down in cold blood. In the month of June 2019 alone, there were 63 murders. Guyama's police and state police did their best to fight back, but it wasn't enough. Instead, the federal police had to come in as well as the military. 2020 saw reports of tourists getting killed. One, a family of nine, was killed in cold blood in their hotel room. Sadly, the violence has only increased in 2020, so much so that the U.S. State Department has advised people not to visit. Cartels are using this city and the entire state to transport goods to the north of Mexico. Kidnappings are off the charts, and human trafficking is the reason. The past year, there were 178 known homicides, but it's likely much higher. This ranks Guyama sixth in all of Mexico for the highest homicide rate, at 105 per 100,000 people. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like things will get any better for Guyamas anytime soon. I'm sure the citizens would love to have their beautiful city back. We fly back down to the state of Guanajuato, to the city of Salamanca. Salamanca is located between two other major cities, Irapuato and Celaya. The city is known for its major industry, including massive oil pipelines that lead to refineries in the city. They pretty much take up the entire northeastern section of the city. And because these oil refineries are here, they are a major target for cartels. An easy way to get a quick buck. By the mid-2010s, cartels were already taking over the city, and the pipelines were their target. In attempts to quell the theft, the Mexican Federal Police moved in, and they put hard pressure on the cartels. And the cartels responded, a nightclub shooting that killed 15. But it didn't stop there. They began raiding local police departments, and gunning down police officers in broad daylight. It was clear that the Salamanca Police Department couldn't handle it, so again, the Mexican military and federal police had to step in. On top of the extra police might, the oil refineries also hired mercenaries to protect their assets. The cartels responded with gunning down more officers and bomb threats. Quite honestly, it's a war zone, a complete disaster. The whole state is. All types of crime are off the charts. And there were 328 reported homicides this past year, but the number is far higher. Unfortunately, cartels have entered within the city government, and it's known that there's corruption throughout the city. All the major companies that invested in Salamanca are probably wondering why now, and the poor citizens who have to live with this every single day. Playas de Rosarito or Rosarito, is a suburb of Tijuana, and a very popular tourist destination with not only Mexicans, but Americans. Which is why it might alarm some people to know that this city of 106,000 has 139 homicides this past year. That means out of 100,000 people, Roughly 130 will be killed. Yikes, why is that? Well, I sound like a broken record, but it's because of the cartels. Since Rosarito is arguably next to one of the most dangerous cities in the world, some of that crime flows over into its streets. Rosarito has also become a popular place for Americans to buy homes. The city has many amenities that Americans like, such as a Walmart and a Home Depot and some other stuff. There's also a Costco not too far away in Tijuana. But crime has continued to increase, and unfortunately, according to a 2019 study, the numerous acts of violence have created a negative perception for the city. According to the Citizen Council for Public Safety and Criminal Justice, they ranked Rosarito as the most dangerous municipality in all of Mexico. And the numbers don't lie. For a city of barely over 100,000, it's really high up there. And in 2017, authorities found out the Russians were involved. At least two bigwig Russian mobsters were making lucrative amounts of money on the drug trade and human trafficking. But to fully understand what's going on in Rosarito, it's best we look at the third most dangerous city in Mexico. Tijuana, the murder capital of Mexico. Two thousand three hundred and sixty seven homicides, roughly ten murders a day, and those are only the ones we know about. But why Tijuana? Well, I'll show you. Depending on the drug, as the cartels make their way north of the country, they either split off to head east or west. If they go west, most likely they are going to cross at Tijuana. And because of this, Tijuana is hit with the brunt of several different cartels 
fighting for territory within the city. Because if you control Tijuana, you control the drug trade into the U.S. and have control over the entire western U.S. But also, immigrants trying to cross into the United States add to the pressures in Tijuana. That's tens of thousands of people with no home now sitting in Tijuana waiting to get into the U.S. And they are easy pickings for the cartels, ripe for human trafficking, or smuggling goods into the U.S. So with upwards of six major cartels in Tijuana, it's no surprise the city is so dangerous. And it's even worse when the people meant to enforce the laws are also corrupt. Tijuana may have one of the most corrupt police forces in Mexico. So unless something major happens, it doesn't look like things are going to change in Tijuana. And Tijuana will remain the most dangerous major city in Mexico. Welcome to the coastal resort city of Manzanillo in the state of Colima, a very popular tourist destination and one of the largest seaports in all of Mexico. Law enforcement's working very hard to keep the city safe because they know if they lose it, they may also lose the very important seaport. Unfortunately for the city, crime has increased. They've had some fairly significant shootouts at bars, robberies, as well as drug dealer showdowns. That's right. The cartels are moving into the state of Colima, and the port is what they want. If they control the port, a lot of the transport through southern Mexico can be evaded, meaning it's a shorter distance to get their goods to America. In an effort to fight the cartels, Manzanillo police, state police, and the federal police have all stepped up their game. They've doubled the city's police force and have judges who are extremely hard on crime. Cartels have responded by killing many high-profile State of Colima officials, as well as police officers. But still, the police force remains, and the port remains under Mexican control, at least on the surface. There have been reports of tourists being killed, and the U.S. and Canadian governments have put advisories against visiting the city. There were 292 known homicides, meaning out of every 100,000 people, 145 would be killed. Hopefully the Mexican government can keep the city out of the hands of cartels and in the hands of law-abiding citizens. Because there's a lot of money to be made in this beautiful coastal city. At number one, we have the most deadly city in Mexico, Zamora, in the state of Michoacan. This small city of just 206,000 people had 375 homicides. That's a rate of 181.2 people per 100,000 being murdered. That makes it have the highest homicide rate in all of Mexico in our data set. But why would this seemingly innocent city be the most deadly city in Mexico? Location, location, location. You might remember Celaya or Salvatierra. And don't forget Salamanca, the important oil refining city. They are all in this little area. But then we also have the important drug port city of Manzanillo. And then if we look at the grander picture of things, Zamora is located in between Mexico City and Guadalajara, along the Western Drug Highway. So all the smuggled goods coming from South America end up at the port of Manzanillo, which then end up on the Western Drug Highway. A lot of that ends up in Zamora before continuing on its trip north. Then we got the pipeline running through Celaya and the refinery in Salamanca. All that stolen oil eventually ends up on the Western Drug Highway, which is where Zamora is. So in this case, Zamora is just at the wrong place at the wrong time. This has caused the entire city to be in complete turmoil as there's constant gang wars every day. People are afraid to leave their homes. Municipal and state leaders have been killed by the cartels, and police have been ambushed on many occasions. In 2019, the state police got over 140 new patrol cars to help in their fight against the cartels. And after some high-profile shootings, the National Guard entered the city of Samora as well. But citizens still don't feel safe. In 2019, citizens actually took hostage Mexican soldiers and stole their weapons. They finally released the soldiers, but without their weapons and their dignity. They said they did this act because they needed weapons to keep themselves safe from the cartels and said that the military was not doing enough to keep them safe. So it is definitely a war in Zamora and much of Mexico. If the people can't trust in law enforcement to keep them safe, then they'll take up arms themselves, and it'll cause more instability in the country. If people also can't trust that their police are free of corruption and not working for the cartels, well, I guess the police aren't that different than the corrupt cartels. And it takes more than just one person to take on an army of drug dealers. You need an effective army to take on an army. You need a country united to take on the cartels. 
Nothing will ever get solved by throwing bodies at stuff. You can already see the results from that. No, what you need is a plan. And you need a plan to cover that plan in case that plan fails. And several others. But you need a plan. And it needs to be a coordinated strike against the cartels. Hit them where it hurts. But I'm no expert. That was a list of the top 10 deadliest cities in Mexico by homicide rate. And there was a lot to take in. But now for a little bit of good news. The second safest city in North America, only to Quebec City, is Merida on the Yucatan Peninsula. Almost all crimes, including petty theft, robbery, corruption, kidnapping, are next to nothing. So good job, Mexico, and the good people of Merida. And don't let all these crime stats scare you, because Mexico still has its safe places. It's a lovely country, lovely people, lovely culture, and lovely food. Stay safe, and thanks for watching.